Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and in this video I'm going to talk about expansion and contraction of metal. And if you watched the last two videos where I shrunk a bearing and then I expanded the uh, housing here to install a bearing, there, there were two videos on that that uh, you guys seem to like. But as long as I got dry ice in stock here, I'm going to go ahead with uh, another uh, video on how metal shrinks and when it gets cold and how it expands when it gets hot because a lot of that can apply to the machine shop and to bearings and other things like that but I've got uh, dry ice right now and it doesn't keep very long but there's a seven dollar block what's what's left of it and remember that dry ice is solid carbon dioxide and you certainly wouldn't want to make it this way, but this is a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. And you can always tell by what it says here on it. Uh, and they always have a cone-shaped uh, deal right here. So you can make your own dry ice, but but again, you wouldn't want to do it. It would cost you too much. But if you just blast this into a pillowcase, you will have dry ice. However, please do not discharge fire extinguishers. And they are sealed, so somebody will find out, and you will get arrested. So don't do it. But there is a source of, of dry ice if you can't find it. And it's most difficult to find dry ice in my geographical location because nobody freezes fish. I even went to the local fish house and he looked at me like I was crazy when I asked for some dry ice. I do a lot of foundry work and pattern making and I have talked about using shrink rules when you make wooden patterns because uh, you have to make the pattern slightly larger because once you cast the metal the uh, the final casting will be smaller than the original pattern. So you use a shrink rule such as this and they come in many different sizes. For instance this one is a shrink rate of uh, 1 16th of an inch per foot. Here are several others in various uh, different shrink rates. There's 5 30 seconds and what is it? 3 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths. Notice now when I push them up against something like this that they are different lengths. They're one foot rollers but they're different lengths because they're shrink rules. When we were boys I got a hold of one of my dad's shrink rules and we made something and we couldn't figure out why Everything was wrong in the finished product until so Dad explained it to me. So shrinkage has to be considered in pattern making, foundry work. Uh, when you are uh, machining, sometimes the work will get hot and temporarily it's larger when you measure it. So I've made an apparatus here and I'm going to both shrink this rod and then I'm going to heat it up and expand it and we're going to measure it with a dial indicator. So look at the apparatus that I have made. This is one half inch diameter steel, exactly a foot long, and I made a little trough. On this end, I've actually sealed it. That probably wasn't necessary because I was going to put ice water on, but I don't think I'll do that. But the, the, the steel sticks through the plastic and is held in the vise. So that's the fixed end. Now as the metal is cooled by putting dry ice in here, it is free to expand but it's going to expand toward the dial indicator because there is no, uh, it is not fixed on that end. The dial indicator which reads in tenths of a thousandths is a digital mitotoyu mounted on a magnet which is mounted onto a heavy steel block so that's not going to move around except by me moving it. So I will bring it up to the end, move it in a little bit like that and I can 
turn it on, I can zero it out. Now I'm going to fill the trough with dry ice. Now you can study this and there's all kinds of charts and everything. Uh, and This is the coefficient of expansion or something like that, but I'm not going to get into math. I don't understand that either, so don't feel bad. But it's going to get shorter. And it'll be considerably shorter, but shrink rates are usually per foot in the English system, so that's why I made this a foot long. And uh, we'll we'll see what happens. It's going to take. It's going to start to shrink right, right away, but it's going to take a while for that to to uh, uh, stabilize and get to its maximum shortness, if you will. And remember that the final number here, the small number on the closest end to the camera, is tenths of a thousandth. So it's zero point. Need to close in. I could do that in metric too. 0 0.0000. So the very last zero is a tenth of a thousandth. Any children watching now remember that a tenth of a thousandth is a very small unit of measurement. In fact, a blonde hair is about a thousandth of an inch in diameter. We'll do a little magic while we're waiting here. This is warm water in the Erwin Meyer flask. See if we can bring Frankenstein alive. Of course it puts the flame out. Where's my lighter? All right, I'm getting sidetracked again. I like to play. What might happen here is I put the dry ice and I probably will jostle this and, and lose my zero setting and have to reset it. It's already shrunk four tenths of a thousandth. Cold right through my glove. And at this point, that's three thousandths. So it's shortened by three thousandths. Not very dramatic yet. Five thousandths, actually fifty two ten thousandths. Here's some quicksilver, mercury. Let's see what happens.
Well, it's not very dramatic. About 10 minutes have passed and we're just a little bit over 10 thousandths shorter. But more dramatic is the mercury, which is frozen and solidified. How neat is that? It won't take too much to get it back into a liquid. Okay, we're going to let just a little bit more time pass, but I don't believe it's going to shrink very much. The problem is I do not have the uh, dry ice packed tightly around the rod. Plus what we're going to do here is that remember that the temperature of the dry ice is about 110 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. The room temperature was 70, is 70 here, so that's a, a difference of 170 degrees, 180 degrees, which isn't all that much. And at this point it's ten and a half thousandths that it has shrunk in a one foot uh, distance. Remember that it's also shrunk a little bit in diameter, if I could get in and measure that. About 20 or 30 minutes has passed, and I know this isn't very scientific, but I don't believe it's going to get any colder or shrink any more than that, and at this point it is Notice there's a minus sign there. Twelve thousandths, a little bit over twelve thousandths, or that's 122 ten thousandths. And when we look at a twelve thousandths thick feeler gauge, you can see that that is how much shorter that rod is than when we started. Now the next thing I'm going to do is clear out all the dry ice, let this get back to room temperature, set the indicator back to zero and I'm going to heat it up with a torch and you're going to see that it expands and that's going to be far more dramatic it's going to expand a lot lot more because we'll bring it up to about 400 degrees again I don't have any good way of of measuring that temperature but we'll see how much it grows by heating it but that's the contraction or shrinking of the metal and it's still going down just a little bit more. It's, it's to 123 ten thousandths. That's a minus again. All right. On to the next step. Now in part two of this experiment, we're going to uh, expand the same half inch steel rod that is 12 inches long. And I'm going to dispense with the little cooling trough. We don't need that anymore. Plus I'd probably burn it up and I put some fire brick under here. Again, this end is fixed. It's not going to move. It's in the vise. We got a little extra weight there. And on the other end, the same indicator. And at this point, let me uh, zero that out. It's at zero. The rod is at uh, 70 degrees, room temperature. Got a little extension on here I talked about before, so I won't get any heat into the indicator. And I'm going to use, uh, well I was going to use this, this little torch, but I don't think it's up to the task, so I'm going to use the larger burns matic And I don't know how hot I'm going to get this. I, I have no decent way of measuring that, but it's going to be way too hot to touch. And we'll watch the, the indicator. It's set in thousands, and it will read plus instead of minus. All right, let's get started. Watch that indicator. We're already over six thousand.
ten thousands. Watch it grow. Seventeen thousand. Now when it gets to about thirty thousandths, that's going to be, if you look on your decimal equivalent chart, thirty-one thousandths uh, will be a thirty-second. I don't know what that is in metric. It's approaching 31. There we are. It's a 32nd of an inch longer than when we started at room temperature. Now how much longer it's going to get, I don't know. I'm certainly not going to bring it to, to red hot. As a matter of fact, this torch would not get it that hot anyway. I'd like to see if I could get it to around 60 thousandths, which is a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, we're almost at 62 thousandths. So for all intents and purposes, we are at the point where this rod is a sixteenth of an inch longer than when I started. Now I don't know if it's going to show up on your monitor, but I'm starting to see a little bit of straw color here. And you know what straw color means. It's cooled down uh, to where it is now. <coughs> 48 thousandths. It's shrinking, that is, it's shrinking, and I got water here, so watch the indicator as I drip a little water on it. See that baby shrinking? It that's even more dramatic because it's, uh, it happens so quickly as I cool it. Can you see the straw color? Just a little bit of that. Now I'm going to take it off and cool it so, I, so that I can handle it and, and talk just a little bit more about it and the, the video is just about over. And I'm not doing math, remember, because I can't do that math on coefficients of uh, expansion. Not to dwell on it, but there is just a little bit of a straw color here. Now, straw color means a very, very light yellow. And according to all of the charts, straw color is approximately 400 degrees. So I, I had the steel rod at about 400 degrees for that amount of expansion. And that's not really all that hot, but you know, it's no hotter than what you would get it in your uh, kitchen oven. I'm over at the Logan lathe now and I'm just giving you an example of an application for uh, expansion and how it could affect your work or your, or your, tool, your uh, machining. We have here a three-quarter bar that's about a foot long also 
held between centers and if you were taking very very heavy cuts on that and it gets hot of course it would expand it would get longer and if you were not using a ball bearing center but then again who uses a dead center anymore and the dead center uh, was would have been lubricated but possibly got hot enough to where it lost much of the lubrication you may hear it start to squeal because now it's too tight between centers and you would no longer be able to uh, feel that that wiggle that you normally do and then you would need to back the tailstock center off a little bit now if you don't do that I have seen these centers burn up they'll get, get hotter than a pistol and the whole end will literally melt off and you may hear the squeal you may not hear the squeal or somebody farther down the line will hear the squeal but it's kind of hard to, to tell where the squeal is coming from when there's a lot of noise in the shop now a solution for that is to install well even a regular uh, ball bearing center like this <clears throat> can be it's probably not going to squeal but then you can damage the center because it's too tight but I like these uh, concentric brand uh, spring-loaded live centers you know there's a spring in here I don't think I'm, you're going to be able to see that but that can get pushed back in there and compensate for the lengthening of the shaft as it heats up. Another example of the expansion being detrimental to your work is that on a larger piece like this if you're taking again very heavy cuts there's no coolant or oil the heat builds up you take a reading you're turning to diameter you take to a reading uh, you, you get a reading you're satisfied with it uh, uh, as far as the blueprint is concerned and you're done with it you lay it down it cools off and your foreman comes over and inspects it later on and the dimension is wrong and that could have been because you measured it when it was hot and it was oversized and then it shrunk slightly as it cooled off and it may not be much but it might be like a half a thousandth or a thousandth or one and a half thousandths Okay, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed this on uh, expansion and contraction of steel in the shop. Some uh, examples of, of uh, what to do about it and some, uh, I think, good examples with the dial indicator on what's actually happening. Hope you liked the video. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.